Thank you very much, Dr. Augustine Attilio. That is a great presentation and also a full of, of updates in your country and also at the state level, uh, very enriching. And great also to hear your uh, assessment of opportunities and, and expectations for the stock taking moments. I think a highlight, also a key opportunity is also, of course, using the system, food system approach and the food system resilience approach to move from the humanitarian towards the development uh, approach and interventions. That's, of course, a, a key element in your, in your story. Um, I see that one of the questions is coming in, so that's great. So I will now invite uh, the participants to think about questions for Dr. Augustine Attilio, but also for the other speakers. As we said, you had possibly noted down your questions on your notebook. The first question is from Rutger Groot, East West Seeds, uh, and he asks whether uh, South Sudanese smallholder farmers, what do they need to feed their country? Training on better farming skills? Do they need quality farm inputs like seeds or financial access or all three of them? Could you highlight that and also possibly what your assessments and your dialogue said about that? Uh, well, I think this is a very good question. Of course, the context of South Sudan is very unique. We are very rich. We, we have all the, 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 the resources that we need to develop our countries. Uh, the only challenge that we have is that most of our people, 80% of the population of South Sudan are living in rural areas and they are practicing subsistence agriculture. Now, uh, they need a lot of support in terms of good policies to help them move towards actually transformation of agricultural uh, system. Uh, South Sudan needs financial support so that we can build up very strong extension system that will be able to move people together from subsistence situation that we are now to better uh, market oriented kind of agriculture this is this is key uh, question number one number two i will give a chance to my colleague uh, dr ngalamo to to add also to this yeah uh, yeah thank you thank you i think the question is in place but uh, East West is uh, a partner in this journey uh, through NUFIC and uh, our collaboration with Alangan University. We're able to start TMT Hoti together. And uh, to be precise, yes, all of smallholder farmers in South Sudan need the three. They need training. They need access to improve seeds because from our assessment, one thing that uh, I think uh, my colleague have not mentioned is to talk about food system transformation, we also need to look into seed because there's an interface between seed system, food system, which is crucial. 80% um, of our seed need in, in this country is from the farm, uh, farm safe seed system, which is poor in quality, but available. So East West comes in with improved seed, which is needed in this intervention. Access to credit is another one. Our farmers cannot do more than what they're doing because they don't have access to credit. Nobody's ready to be a collateral, even the government. So I think, yeah, all the three is fundamental to ensure that they feed themselves. Thank you. Thank you for your clarifications, uh, both uh, Dr. Tony as well as Dr. Augustine. And uh, I'll open the floor for another question from the audience. And your question may be directed to uh, the Gain Bangladesh team or to uh, Jordan uh, representative, uh, Dr. Walid, please raise your hand electronically or ask a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. It is very silent, it seems. Possibly I can ask a question to either Dr. Walid or to uh, Mrs. Uh, Mandira, um, foresight, was referred to several times, and we have uh, representatives of Wageningen University here as well. What exactly does foresight methods add to this complexity of, of building a food systems agenda? What did it solve for you in the meantime? Could you may clarify that? Me, Paul, yes. Can you hear me? It's Rudaba, Dr. Rudaba. May I, speak? may I come in? Thank you very much. I think it is very important to look at the different scenarios and modeling. 
because government has after the covid and the you know russia ukraine war the food price has increased and we know we have to be very careful in investing what the foresight does is basically gives us different simulation and modulation and dr walid can also highlight there where we're going to prioritize which roads will take to the our goal so that we can from feeding the people nourish the people we can look at people planet and ourselves equally ensuring that our youth our indigenous is nobody is left behind so that's why it is very critical to have that at the forefront of our thinking as well in built as an exercise so that's why we have integrated foresight as the part of the planning prioritization budget analysis and ensure a private and public sector investment thank you over thank you that's uh, very inspirational uh, do you want to comment uh, mr walid you're on mute you want to comment then please unmute your microphone yeah just uh, a small uh, institutional issue you know the foresight really in jordan at least i can say is trying to building uh, a good partnership with the national institutions you know uh, University of Wageningen and the University of Oxford working together in Jordan in this regard. And we are trying now, we are in the final stage to sign agreements with the University of Jordan, University of Science and Technology, and the National Research Center, just for localization and domestication of the knowledge. It's not just, it's not a methodology and modeling and this and that. It's the challenge is how to domestic, domesticate this knowledge to fit Jordan context. And that, for this, I think the people through the two workshops that have materialized, appreciate a lot what foresight can do. Uh, another important issue is the trade offs and synergies. I mean, th there are a lot of options will come in the way. Now, how to prioritize in what basis in very scientific not uh, or objective, not subjective way. This is what foresight and the University of Wageningen and uh, Oxford will, will give will give us uh, add value of this way of doing this business. Yeah. Thank you. This is also a very nice uh, clarification and, and good for all of us to understand that a bit better. There's a question uh, for Dr. Artilio from Meet Helens, uh, the hunger project in the Netherlands. How is the nutrition aspect included? in uh, the state policies. Could you clarify that? And you're on mute, so possibly, okay, yes. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Of course, nutrition is, 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 uh, is part of our engagement. As we address the food security, we also address nutritional security. So we have a food and nutrition security policy in a draft form. But recently, the Ministry of Health is actually working to develop nutrition policy for the country. So as, as, as soon as these policies are actually validated at the national level, then they will be cascaded at the state level. We call them the state. These are the, the, the lower administrative units because we have three levels of government. So the policy nutrition is very key because uh, when we, we carry out the food system assessment, the number of children who are malnourished, and the number of women who are actually suffering from uh, micronutrient deficiency is very, very big. So the issue of nutrition is really very key in addressing the food system transformation. So it, we are taking it very seriously. Yeah, maybe just to add a point, uh, out of the nine pathways we developed, we facilitated actually, uh, in Torib, for instance, it's an equatorial state. One of the pathway is actually talking about nutrition and nutrition-related intervention, which again uh, echoes the importance of the partnership with East-West Seed Company in providing seeds of improved uh, uh, vegetables for healthy and nutrition uh, diets in South Sudan. So yes, it's crucial and it's well catered for. Yeah, over again. Thank you.